Now, before we get into today's spectacular landscape photography vlog, we've got a bit of an announcement and it should be quite obvious to you that we now live in this church. So we have moved all the way to Nova Scotia and we're now renovating a 100 year old church. So what we decided to do is create a whole new YouTube channel to catalog this life changing adventure. And it's called Hardcastle Towers. Hardcastle Towers. So there's a link in the description to the very first episode where we give you the full tour of the church and talk about the reasons why we left BC and what we're going to do with the church. But don't worry, Photo Tripper is not going to be changing. I'm still going to be posting kind of weekly vlogs. So don't worry about that. But if you want to support this new channel, head over to the new channel and give it the old like and subscribe if you would. Now, a lot of people have been asking me, why? Why would you leave this paradise, Vancouver Island, to move to a dilapidated old church in the middle of nowhere in one of Canada's coldest, wettest, darkest provinces? And uh, I actually do address many of the reasons why we decided to leave to Atlantic Canada. But in this photo trip of vlog right here, right now, I'm going to address the most important and deeply personal reason why I felt the need to leave Vancouver Island and British Columbia altogether. Why is that? I think you know. Why. All right, let's roll this very last Vancouver Island vlog. Right, so now that you know that we're gonna be leaving for Atlantic Canada, what I thought we would do today is come all the way to the Pacific side of Vancouver Island, because we're doing this coast to coast trip, right? Say goodbye to the Pacific Ocean for our very last sunset shoot. And then this time next week, we'll be saying hello to the Atlantic Ocean on the other side of Atlantic Canada. And today I'm joined again by Jenny, Amanda's mother. Hi Gareth, it's nice to be back. You know it's Gavin, this is like the fifth time. Gavin, Gareth. So uh, you're leaving tomorrow, are you Jenny? Yeah, yeah, tomorrow at 1. 1 a.m.? No, 1 p.m. I'm gonna have coffee with you in the morning. Uh, another 16 hours of you, that's great. Well, uh, should we get down to the beach then? Maybe there's a chance we'll see some whales, eh? Yeah, I don't think we will. Well, no, there's a chance, you know, it's it's the West Coast. Like a small, small chance. Well, we might see some more, because it could be the best part of your trip, could be the highlight. I guess. Mm. I bet if you were with Adam Gibbs, you'd be a bit more enthusiastic, wouldn't you? I would, mm. absolutely. Actually, uh, Amanda said he was going to be here, which is why I booked my trip for now. I'm sorry he's not here. Yeah, me too. You know, I've got his hat. The uh, quiet light hat. You bought his hat? Oh yeah, did I ever. Isn't it nice? Yep. Yeah. I right. thought he'd be here and he could sign it for me. Well, he's not here, is he? So no, he's, he's not. Stuck with me, aren't you? Yeah. Alright, well let's get down to the beach then. Oh, I really needed those whales to show up and prove me right. Anyway, to be honest with you, one of the reasons we're going to be moving to Atlantic Canada is well, it's on the other side of the continent, isn't it? So these visits should be a bit less frequent, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, by the way, this spot, this is where I got one of my favorite shots of all time. I'll just flip this around and show you the composition roughly. So it's down here, looking through there at those trees. And uh, this is the shot that I ended up with a few years ago. focus stacked image just goes to show that even with a good composition it's the quality of the light and the timing that makes a great shot and with this one i've got to admit i got lucky with that timing so yeah that was that was one of my favorite shots of all time do, do you remember that it was in that book that i gave you what book chasing all with with gavin arcus i gave you a copy for christmas Oh, did it come like in a little box? Yeah, pizza box. Oh, I haven't opened it yet. Yeah. No. 
it wasn't Christmas this year, it was Christmas the year before, so it's like, like 14 months you've had it. Oh, do you know what is a good book, which I have looked at? Adam Gibbs, called Quiet Light, quite good. So yeah, that's one of my favorite shots of all time, yeah. Uh, hope you liked it too. Now, when I first started thinking about moving to the other side of Canada, I checked the cost of flights from BC to Nova Scotia, and they were outrageously expensive. So one of the things that I love about this spot, Botanical Beach here on the West Coast, is these tide pools and the marine life that you can sometimes find in orcas. Look, I told you we'd get orcas, brilliant. Wow. Yeah. That's not an orca. That's a killer whale right there. It's like a, a whole pod of orcas right there. No, yeah. no it isn't. Maybe a dolphin? That's a full pod of orcas right there. Killer whales. It's a log. See, it just goes and down with the waves. How often do you uh, refill your prescription on your specs? Well, if you don't believe me, I'm just going to get the camera out and get some shots and I'll, I'll show you on the back of the camera. Okay, good luck. Yeah, so if I, if I get clear pictures of killer whales on my camera, then you'll believe me. You could have photoshopped it. Oh, I'm done. I'm, I'm... I believe you. Thanks, love. Ridiculous. So I decided to set up my camera and wait for the orcas to put on a show. But would they come back in time for me to prove I was right? I'll bloody well show her some bloody orcas. Let's put this 100 to 400 on, rattle off a few shots, and then we'll see what she says, eh? Yeah, yeah how about that, eh? How about that, eh? Yeah. I'll bloody show you some killer whales. Well... They might not win any uh, wildlife photography awards, but it'll certainly put the old mother-in-law in our place for now. Cannot wait to get off this island, I tell you. My chances of capturing one last beautiful sunset on Vancouver Island were not looking good. Perhaps it was time to just say goodbye and begin our huge voyage across Canada. Right, well, I was hoping to get a nice sunset shop here at Botany Bay. I think they call this Botany Bay, a botanical beach. But look at that, that's pretty grim. A complete blanket of dark, heavy gray clouds. I don't think it's gonna happen. So, you know, all that we got out of today was those spectacular orcas. And, uh, you know, if that's the best we get, then I'm quite happy with that. It was worth coming out. And it was nice to say goodbye to our beloved Pacific Ocean. Yeah. Which we uh, we might not see again for a while. I guess we have to dip our feet in. So that's what we did. My waterproof boots weren't even remotely waterproof. So Amanda showed me how to do this properly. <laughs> yes, I guess it's not just bye-bye to the Pacific, is it? It's uh, bye bye to Jenny for quite some time. Oh, it won't be long. What? What? What are you no, talking? I've got another trip planned. What are you talking about? Like I'm going to the East Coast in June. You guys will be there by then, won't you? Well, where, where, where on the East Coast are you going? Uh, where are you going to be? No, well, I was just wondering, you know, like where you're going to be first. Like, well, I don't know until I know where you're going to be. Oh, uh, well, I guess we'll have to wait on that then. You know, <laughs> yeah. To be announced. <laughs> to be announced. Well, I guess the next ocean that you'll see is that is the Atlantic. So, uh, should we just drive 6,000 kilometres, love? Yeah. With two screaming cats. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be nothing but fun, I'm sure. I'm sure it's going to be awesome. But before we could embark on our journey, I had to make the camper comfortable for the rulers of the house. Right, so I'm inside the camper. And this is going to be our vehicle for our cross Canada road trip. We're not moving in this. All of our stuff's getting moved by movers, but our immediate stuff, such as clothes, camera gear, and the office, that's coming with us so that we can we can get there and start working immediately. And most importantly, our two spoiled cats, Leo and Sterling. So I've had to make a few modifications to accommodate the cats, which we've never traveled with them before. Usually when we travel, we just, 
you know, leave them at home and we have a professional cat sitter that comes and takes care of them. But for this move, obviously we're gonna to have to take the cats. So what's cool about this camper is that you can drop this table and turn this whole dinette system into an extra bed. But don't tell Uncle Grumpy because I've told him that it only sleeps two. So what I'm gonna do is install this cage down onto this piece of plywood here. I'm gonna add some additional screws that screws the plywood into the frame. And I'm gonna screw this to the plywood with some straps. And then it's gonna get wedged in. So we're gonna wedge it in with the table. So even if the straps broke, it can't really move very far. So I'm hoping that that's gonna be enough to keep the cats safe while we're driving. Right, so for the base of the cage, I've basically screwed it down with some heavy duty washers and this plastic strapping that was used originally to strap the microwave into the camper, which I took out, but I saved the strapping. So that has now fixed it down so that if I go over a bump, if the cage kind of lifts up like that, it won't be too bad. So I've only got enough strapping though to either put another one on and try and really think about that vertical movement or I might just strap it to the side so that if there's any of this kind of movement that won't bother them too much either. So what I did is I just folded these uh, plastic straps under tension and then screwed them down with these washers into this solid piece of timber here. I mean that's thin, it's hollow and then there you go you got some framework here. So I'm <laughs> It's pretty ghetto, but it'll do the trick. You know, it's not moving up or down or sideways. So it's in as much as I can get it in. Now I'm gonna wedge it in with the table, get some soft furnishings to really squeeze it in. And I reckon we'll be sound and waterproof just in case there's any uh, mishaps. With the babies all snug and cosy, the Cross Canada voyage began. We blasted through the Canadian Rockies, stopping in Swift Current, Saskatchewan, to enjoy a superb chicken curry and garlic naan. Eight miserable days later, and with an entire cluster of throbbing bum cherries, we finally arrived at our new home in Nova Scotia. Even though we were completely knackered, we got excited about the big reveal of this once beloved church. Right, you ready? Yeah. Oh no, never mind that. Come on, let's have a look. <laughs> look at the size of this. It's massive. That's brilliant. You can see the potential, can't you? Yeah. Eh? Oh, it's a bit chilly though, isn't it? What kind of insulation do we have? Oh, there's, uh, there's no insulation. It's, you know, it's 100 years old. They didn't bother with insulation back then. You know. Well, how long is it gonna be like this for? Oh, yeah, you know, two, three years or something like that. You know, we'll sort the insulation out, don't worry. We'll, we'll get it toasty, yeah. You know, you gotta you got try and imagine, you know, the finished, the finished thing, you know? There's no, there's no washroom uh, or shower. There's no water, no running water. No water? No, I mean, we'll, we'll drill a well, you know, we'll, we'll install a well. Uh, but you know, you've got the camper though, right? So that'll keep you, you know, you better do your plops and your showers. But you can't have 20 minute showers. They've got to be like two minute showers. I know you like to spend a bit of time in there. Yeah, it's called cleanliness. Yeah, I mean, just you know, say goodbye to that for a while and just kind of, you know, we're just going to be roughing it a little bit, you know? Back to basics, you know? But you can see the, the potential, can't you? You know, the, the grand vision. I don't know. What about sewage? Well, that's one good thing. Uh, I've got somebody on that right now. And before you know it, we'll have a brand new septic system ready to take sewage. A load of cat litter? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I've got it all figured out, love. It's going to be. But you can see the potential, though, can't you? Eh? The grand vision. It's big. Yeah. Anyway, let's give you a bit of a tour of this place and uh, talk you through what we're going to do. And I don't think that when they made this ladder, they were expecting a man of my uh, sturdiness to be climbing up it. Anyway, as I mentioned, I'm doing a whole new channel dedicated to this church conversion. So there's a link in the description below. Please go and watch that video. And if you like it, give it the old thumbs up and maybe even subscribe. Right, so what is that? What is that smell? <laughs> Kind of smells like bat piss. Right, let's get up this belfry, see what we got. 
Now, whenever you're uh, doing belfry inspections, like I regularly do, it's vital to wear appropriate footwear for dangerous jobs like this. Have you got a good shot of my bum? Now, at some point in the past, there have definitely been bats up in this belfry, but I was assured by the realtor that they are now long gone. However, I can see while they were here, there's been quite a bit of damage done to this insulation. Let me just show you this. It's pretty nasty and it stinks. So this here is the blown in pink insulation that you can see, and it's absolutely soiled with guano and it absolutely reeks. Now it's concentrated mainly at this end of the attic and it's pretty clean still on the other end of the attic there. So I am going to have a right clean up job. That is just absolutely rank. And I don't really want to linger here because uh, guano, I think is quite toxic. So I'm already tasting it in the back of my throat. So that has got to be dealt with, especially before the hot summer months, because coming up here, when it's a hot summer's day, it's gonna be nasty. So I wanna get on top of this real quick while the days are still fairly cold. Right, let's get up into the belfry and uh, give you a little bell ring. So the bell is so big, I can barely fit it in the frame here. So let's just turn this wheel to give it a, a little tinkle. Oh, that is, uh, that goes right through you, especially when you're right next to it. So the plan is with this thing, um, I don't really want to get rid of it, but at the same time, it's a big old massive, heavy, rusty piece of metal up in this dilapidated old belfry. So what I think I'll have to do at some point, and I don't know when, this might be years down the line, is just get it removed, just get it craned out. I'll have to take down some of the ceiling here and just kind of reduce this to a lower level. Uh, but what I'd love to do, if I can crane the, the bell out and the whole frame that's holding it together, I'd love to get it cleaned up and then put into the church as like a nice ornament because uh, I want to try and just keep everything from the church still in the church once this conversion has been done so that it's just kind of recycled, you know. Uh, but that is going to be quite the uh, quite the feat, going to be quite expensive and I don't want to be anywhere near it when the crane starts to lift this thing out. But there you go. I've never had a church bell before and now I own a church bell. Ooh, it makes me twitchy being up in this tower so I'm just going to go back down I think. Yeah, so that's uh, that's basically a little teaser, uh, but if you want to watch the full tour, just go to that link in the description and watch that very first episode of Hardcastle Towers. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it the old thumbs up, maybe subscribe to the channel and don't forget to tickle my bell. And in next week's video, we finally find the time to go out and enjoy some landscape photography here in Nova Scotia for our very first shoot. So till next time, bye. bye. You guys will be there by then, won't you? Well, well, where, where on the East Coast are you going? I don't know, where are you going to be? <laughs> <laughs> Gavin Garrett. You know, you know, it's, you know it's Gavin. I just I don't know why you do this. <laughs> <laughs> we sent you a wedding invitation. I didn't get a wedding invitation. Did you not send it to her? Did you get married? You're not married. We're married. No. No. No, you're not married. Yeah. No. Yeah. So yeah. Running uh... <laughs> on the spot. Do your warm up. Come on, Charlie. Harder, faster, longer. It's cold. <laughs> it's freezing here. Do that cluck cluck. Do a chicken in the I, woods. I want to do. <laughs> oh, Adam does it better. <laughs> now you see where Amanda gets this from. It's it's in the family. <laughs> it's a good family. You're lucky. Yeah. Very lucky. I'm good now. Oh, I haven't opened it yet. No. No. Well, it wasn't Christmas this year, it was Christmas the year before, so it's like, like 14 months you've had it. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, I bet if this was, uh, I bet if you were down here with Adam, you'd be like, yeah, that's a, it's a sperm whale. <laughs> <laughs> They're such children. I don't know how to respond to that. Well, it's still a little bit up in the air, you know, with closing date and all that, so. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm sure whatever I find is going to be like fairly close. I'm going to want to see Amanda for coffee in the morning. I don't think it will. Uh, do I think it will? No, it's probably not though. I mean, because we want to be somewhere remote, you know, like. I like remote. Really far away from other people. Yeah, well, I've, I've, you know, like at least a mile down the road. And, mm, like a hundred miles, I think. It's probably more. No, it's too far. Mm, uh, no, it's not far enough. <laughs> 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 but, but I didn't know she'd be living in the basement though, did I? Oh, we could do that too, when we think of that. Well, my mother will be in the basement, so... And they're, they're not going to get along. They won't get along. Well, she gets along with everyone. Yeah, my mum... She's not going to like yours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, mum. I know you will. I know you will. I hope you will. 